What's the best piece of advice you ever got? Learn when to say no. Learn when to say no. What's the worst piece of advice you ever got? Um, YOLO, you only live once. <laughs> <laughs> Superpower you wish you had in real life? Um, I wish I could freeze time. Freeze time? Freeze time. Stop. Stop time and then move around and do stuff and then come back in. Yeah. You will remember me. Everybody gonna know your name. My name is King T'Challa. Thurgood Marshall. Jack Roosevelt Robinson. Nine Brown. Hey friend, welcome to my channel Karina Lude where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars in history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so and turn your notifications on so you never miss an upload. Now let's get into this video. Today we are celebrating the life of Chadwick Boseman. He has a special place in my heart and my soul. He is one of the icons next to Denzel, of course, who is the epitome of black excellence. This won't be a sad video, okay? We're celebrating his life because he has left behind a legacy. Culture writer Steve Rose in The Guardian said that Bozeman's career was revolutionary and he leaves behind a game-changing legacy. Attributing this to the actor's careful planning and selection of roles, Rose also wrote, Chadwick Bozeman began his career playing African-American icon pioneers and he ends it as one himself. No truer words have been written, okay? His achievements as an actor and as a cultural force will surely prove to be heroic as those are the characters he portrayed. He leaves the filmmaking landscape looking very different to how it was when he entered it. BBC Culture called him a film icon who changed Hollywood, a symbol of black excellence and of cinematic excellence, and a virtuoso and heroic figure, not just because of his iconic turn as Marvel's Black Panther, but for how he raised the bar for racial equality and representation on screen. Bozeman's charitable work extends beyond the stage. Before his own illness-related death, Bozeman asked a producer about delivering gifts to children with cancer through one of the cancer charities he worked with, which was St. Jude's Children Research Hospital. The Black Panther Challenge was launched by a New Yorker with the intention of raising money for underprivileged children all throughout the country, and he donated $10,000 to the Boys and Girls Club of Harlem to fund free tickets for kids who wish to watch the film. As a result, Disney gave the Boys and Girls Club $1 million to support its STEM initiatives. In April of 2020, he gave $4.2 million in PPE to hospitals battling the C-19 pandemic in Black communities and launched his own Operation 42 challenge to inspire others to give PPE. There is also the human side of Chadwick. Though he looks like this almost royal figure, right? He presents himself as a king. He walks with such excellence and a calm power. It was also human. Chadwick loved Thai food. He also revealed that he's not exactly a fan of fast food. When he was asked to choose between Wendy's or McDonald's, he replied neither. He also did not eat any pork and would only eat beef if he was putting on weight for a particular role, but he avoided red meat a lot. His favorite colors were Chinese gold, and red rum. He also had hobbies like playing golf and listening to music, acting, traveling, boxing, and cycling. We're gonna get into his childhood and his iconic career. But before I start, of course, I'm going to promote. Y'all know I'm always gonna promote for you guys to go see Black Panther Wakanda Forever if you haven't seen it already. And I hope this movie is the number one movie ever. Y'all know Haiti had a cameo in there and Capaïcien, okay? I was very, very proud to see that. And you guys uh, probably missed that 1804, no spoilers for anyone. No spoilers, don't worry. But that 1804 in the film and the name of some of the characters mm, towards the end, that were very interesting. And I just have a feeling that the next Black Panther movie will have a lot more Haiti in there. But please, enjoy the movie and I know it was a wonderful, wonderful tribute to Chadwick also. It felt like witnessing his funeral. That's one thing that I thought, you know, having that closure um, in such a beautiful way and it was for the fans also to kind of have that closure and witnessing his home going. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, please go see it. Do not listen to the trolls on Twitter. There's always trolls on Twitter that's gonna complain and look for a reason to like not watch something, please go see it, ignore them, and give Angela Bassett all her flowers also. I'm gonna save the Angela Bassett video for when she wins 
her first Oscar, okay? Because she's getting an Oscar for this role and then I'm going to come back and do a video for Angela Bassett. Remember I said that. Now let's get into Chadwick's childhood. Chadwick was born Chadwick Aaron Bozeman to African-American parents, Carolyn and Leroy Boisman and Anderson, and he had two brothers. He was born in South Carolina. His mother was a nurse while his father had an upholstery shop and a textile factory. Bozeman began studying martial arts as a kid and has kept it up as an adult while he was living. He always envisioned himself as an architect from an early age. DNA tests revealed that Bozeman has, has roots from Sierra Leone, Creole, and Limba, as well as Nigerian, Yoruba, Ancestry. Yozan was raised as a Christian and was baptized. He was part of a church choir and youth group and his former pastor said that he still kept his faith. He studied Hebrew and had a good knowledge of both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Bozeman has stated that he prayed to be the Black Panther before he was cast as a character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and was very happy that many people wanted that role for him also. Bozeman attended TL Hannah High School and graduated in 1995 where he was a member of the varsity basketball team. After a student was shot in his junior year and his life taken out, he wrote and performed his first play called Crossroads at the school. During this time at TL Hannah, he competed in National Speech and Debate Association tournaments. He finished sixth in original oratory at the 1995 national tournament. And I'm always excited when I see someone was in debate because <laughs> we don't have a lot of that. I always say that I love to see when they were in uh, debate teams because I was in a debate team in high school and it, it was not really popular. Okay. He had a basketball scholarship but chose to major in directing at Howard University in Washington DC where he earned a BFA in 2000. According to his friend Vanessa German, his job in an African-American bookstore near Howard University was meaningful and inspirational to him. He drew on this experience when writing his play Hieroglyphic Graffiti. At Howard, he was taught by the likes of Al Freeman Jr. and Felicia Rashad, both of whom became a significant figure in his life. Rashad helped Bozeman and his classmates raise money to attend the British American Drama Academy, Oxford Summer Program at Belial College, Oxford, England. One of the donors was Rashad's close friend and famous actor Denzel Washington. Bozeman wanted to write and direct, so he studied acting to better communicate with actors. In 1998, he enrolled in the program and came away with a newfound respect for William Shakespeare's plays. He also studied the works of other dramatists such as Samuel Beckett and Harold Pinter. For the first time, he went to Africa during his undergraduate years where he and his professor, Mike Malone, worked in Ghana to maintain and commemorate customs with performances on a proscenium stage. This was one of the most crucial learning experiences of his life, he later said. He then went on to, to complete his film studies education at the Digital Film Academy in New York City after returning to the United States. Bozeman began his career in Brooklyn, New York. He directed George C. Wolfe's The Colored Museum and Amiri Baraka's Dutchman. Between 2002 to 2009, he taught drama in the Schoenberg Junior Scholars Program in Harlem. In 2002, he rose to popularity as a playwright and theater actor participating in various shows and receiving a Adualeco prize from Ron Milner's Urban Transitions in New York's National Shakespeare Program. He played Romeo in Romeo and Juliet and Malcolm in Macbeth. He co-wrote Rhyme Deferred with Howard classmate Camilla Forbes and appeared in Hieroglyphic Graffiti. Bozeman's first television appearance was on an episode of Third Watch in 2003 and he then started portraying Reggie Montgomery in the daytime soap opera All My Children. After raising concerns with the producers about racial stereotypes in the script, he was let go from All My Children. Michael B. Jordan, a future co-star in Black Panther, was then cast in the part. When given the second draft and informed that his character's part were a drug addict and an absent father, Bozeman reportedly confronted the writers and according to his then future agent, in his commencement speech to Howard University in 2018, he discussed the incident and said that it seemed to be wrapped up in an assumption about us as black individuals and he would have to build something out of nothing. Episodes of the television shows Law & Order, Cold Case, CSI, NY and ER were among his other early credits. Bozeman relocated to Hollywood in 2008 to seek a career in cinema and acting. He played Nathaniel Ray Taylor, a war veteran suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder and eventually revealed to be the protagonist's son in a TV series, Lincoln Heights. In 2008, he made his debut in a feature film, The Express, The Ernie Davis Story, in which he played running back Floyd Little. As Jackie Robinson, Bozeman had his big break in the 2013 film 42. A total 
total of about 25 actors were seriously considered for the role, but Bozeman was hired after only two auditions because director Brian Helgeland admired his courage in reading the most challenging scene in which Robinson goes down a stadium tunnel and destroys a bat in anger. Robinson's wife, Rachel Robinson, said that watching Bozeman on stage was like reliving the moment she first met her husband. Bozeman spent five months training with professional baseball coaches so that he could mimic Robinson's techniques. He played James Brown in the 2014 musical Get On Up and I loved him in that a lot more than the Robinson actually. As Brown, Bozeman did some singing and all of his own dancing, working with choreographer Akamon Jones for five to eight hours a day over two months in preparation. Producer Mick Jagger also directed him on dealing with fans on performing live music. Now let's get into his role as Black Panther. In 2016, Bozeman was cast as T'Challa, Black Panther from Marvel Comics in the MCU. He signed a five picture agreement with Marvel Entertainment, the first of which was Captain America Civil War. During filming of Civil War, Bozeman himself adopted a Wakandan accent and spoke in it whether he was on camera or not. He told the Associated Press that he related better to the Black Panther's enemy, Killmonger. In 2018, Bozeman reprised his role as the Black Panther in Black Panther, a movie that focused on a character in his African homeland of Wakanda. There was a lot of buzz leading up to the release. I went to see it dressed up in a dashiki child, listen, okay? And it was a box office smash. Bozeman's performance in the film landed him on the Time Magazine's 100 Most Important Persons in the World for Time Magazine in 2018 as the first superhero picture to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture in the first mega budget film with a primarily black cast and director, Black Panther is recognized as a watershed moment. The film also earned positive reviews from critics with one calling Bozeman's performing sub Shakespearean gravitas to T'Challa struggling to bear the weight of his crown. He reprised the role in both Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame which were released in 2018 and 2019. Both films were the highest grossing of the year they were released with Endgame going on to become the highest grossing film of all time. In 2019 he starred in 21 Bridges an American action thriller film directed by Brian Kirk as an NYPD detective. In 2019 Bozeman was announced as part of the cast for Netflix film The Five Bloods directed by Spike Lee and Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, directed by George C. Wolfe. He took these bucket list roles for opportunities to work with Lee and with Ma Rainey producer Denzel Washington, as well as the opportunity to perform in an August Wilson play, telling Entertainment Weekly that he wanted to make these non-superhero films because if you don't do the films that you plan to do, I think you wouldn't feel fulfilled as an artist, end quote. Now, as far as his relationship, Bozeman began dating singer Taylor Simone Ledward in 2015. The two reportedly got engaged by October 2019 and they later married in secret as revealed by Bozeman's family in a statement announcing his death. There were also not many rumors or not much to say about his relationship life. He was a very very private guy. Initially diagnosed in 2016 as stage 3 cancer, Bozeman's colon cancer advanced to stage 4 well before 2020. He never disclosed his cancer diagnosis to the public and as reported by The Hollywood Reporter, just a handful of non-family individuals understood that Bozeman was unwell, with different knowledge about the seriousness of his condition. By undergoing extensive surgery and chemotherapy, he continued working throughout his treatments and saw the completion of several films including Marshall, The Five blood my rainy and others and i just want to say i was so disappointed with social media around that time because when he came out a lot of people made fun of his appearance not knowing that he had an illness and this just goes to show that we should really show compassion when people change even if they gain weight also it's not always because oh my goodness they're a slob and they've been eating their life away no a lot of people deal with illnesses that make them gain weight also or that you know make them lose a lot of weight um, pretty quickly and it's best to just be polite and not speak on certain things but you know with social media people can hide behind a picture and just say the most ridiculous things. On August 28, 2020, Bozeman sadly passed away in the company of his family and wife in Los Angeles after a long battle with colon cancer. As for his age, he was 43 years young. Since he did not leave a will, California law will be used to settle his estate with his wife. Deanna Brown Thomas, the daughter of James Brown, whom Bozeman portrayed in Get On Up and Bozeman's childhood pastor, spoke during his public memorial ceremony on September 4, 2020 in Anderson, South Carolina. During the ceremony, city officials revealed that they were planning to commission a memorial sculpture. Many fellow actors and other celebrities paid tribute to Bozeman on social media following the announcement of his death, including a number of his Marvel Cinematic 
Cinematic Universe co-stars. On August 29, 2020, the day after Bozeman died, the tweet in which his family announced his death on his Twitter account became the most liked tweet in history, with over 6 million likes in under 24 hours, and accumulating over 7 million by August 31st for displacing the previous record holder. On November 29, 2020, Marvel changed the studio's logo animation in the opening of Black Panther on Disney Plus to include images of Bozeman from the film to honor what would have been Bozeman's 44th birthday. Please leave a positive comment about Chadwick. Please don't forget to not spoil anything. Still give it some time for people to see the movie. Okay, do not spoil anything, but definitely give him his flowers. He deserves it. Like this video, share with a friend. If you like the music you're listening to in the background, the link is in the description. Also comment below who else would you guys like to see? I love you guys so much. Stay safe, stay positive, and stay kind. Until next time. Don't cry now. Ain't nothing to cry about. You're so pretty. You're so beautiful.